Hello and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker and I'm your host. And so today we're going to talk about sales magic. There's got to be magic in sales, right? Because, well, when you're selling, there's got to be magic to create that connection with somebody who's buying. So today we're talking to Victoria Buckman, and she has over 30 years of sales success, and she loves to create sales magic. And she has created a successful corporate career for herself with a Fortune 100 company, achieving 1,000% of quota month after month and year after year. She is a certified dream coach, a higher guidance business coach, a former premier success coach of the eWomen Network. She's also a hypnotherapist and an intuitive. So it's the in and out game. With coaching, training, and sales experience, she brings a wealth of knowledge and inspiration to those who want to learn the inside secrets of sales. And so without further ado, Victoria, welcome to the show. Thank you, Penny. So glad to be here. So what do you think is so uh, magic about the sales process? What I think is so magic about the sales process is that we get to connect with people. We get to make a new friend, find out what their dream and vision is, and help them achieve that. That's magical. It is magical. When you find, when you have something that someone else wants and you can make that connection, uh, that, that can be magical, right? So where yes. is the trouble? Where's the trouble? Where do, where do salespeople have the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge that people have is they don't really recognize that they lead with their energy first. We are, you know, we're energy beings. You have an EKG, you have an EEG, right? We're, we're energy beings. And when we have this emotion of fear or desperation or anxiety, anxious, that comes across long before we ever say a word. It totally does. You know what's funny is I just did uh, a keynote yesterday to an, uh, an organization that was full of veterinarians and whatnot. So to make that point, right, I said that uh, there's a, a, a thing that dogs can smell fear, right? Okay, they can't really smell it. We, we can't smell someone else's fear, but we can totally feel it. Just like that dog knows when somebody is you know, apprehensive, and then they react, their energy changes accordingly, right? Exactly. Exactly. We are the same way. How many times have you walked into a room, and there's no one in the room, but you know that somebody had a heated fight in that room 10 minutes before? You can feel the energy in that room, and it's still lingering. So when right. we show up with this fear or anxiety or this desperation, I've got to get a client or I've got to get some, you know, I've got to pay my mortgage, whatever it might be, that energy is going to show up. The other party, the person who you're speaking to, they're going to feel it. They may not know, they may not pinpoint it and, and know exactly what that energy is, but they're going to go, hmm, something's not right. This doesn't feel good. Something's yeah. off. Right? right. And it's going to affect their energy and it's going to affect the experience that they're having in that conversation. Exactly. So, you know, I, I want to go back to the point you talked about desperation. You know, so many people, right, they're goal oriented. And what they don't realize is that they're a little too goal oriented, is that it creates then an obsession and obsessive behavior towards a goal becomes more uh, of that desperate energy, right? It becomes more of a scarcity than it does in terms of a motor towards that goal. Yes, yes. So what would you yeah. say, how does somebody handle that? So like, you know, that's maybe the way that I'm showing up in my sales process. And of course, I'm, how would I know that? I'm probably not getting the results that I want, right? And people are right. not, not buying right. from me. So how do I shift that? The fastest and easiest way to shift that is to think about something that you're passionate about, someone that you love, you were talking about the veterinarians, think of an animal or a baby, or just go into really deep gratitude. What do you have gratitude for? 
And that will shift your energy so fast. And it's palpable. It really is. Totally. I, I also recommend gratitude as a place to go into, right? Because you can always find something that you're grateful for, uh, whether yes. it's nature, whether it's, you know, like you said, a, an animal, you go, go watch a cat video, right? Oh, this is a perfect time to watch a cat video right before you go on a sales call. Yes. <laughs> well, think about something that you did in your life that just excited you and it was so much fun and it was just you have this memory and you're just so grateful for having that experience. Yeah. 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 And I, I think also it's really important to connect to, um, you know, what is your drive, like your purpose, not a goal, but something that, that, that you were excited about being a part of. So hopefully whatever this person, you know, if I'm in sales and I'm selling something that isn't just a product, you know, how is this going to enhance someone's life? and really get connected to the value that it provides. So if I'm, you know, a sales, uh, I, I'm selling houses, for instance, you know, I could look at it as though I'm building communities and that I'm creating happy families because they have a, a place to live and to, and, and to call their own and, and to be comfortable in. So, you know, it, it can be a different focus by focusing on what the other person is gaining than just I'm making the sale. Yes. And not only building communities, you are providing somebody with a home that has a whole different feel than I'm selling a house. Totally. Right? Even just the word. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So just, yeah, stop talking about selling. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's a good point right there, right? Well, the, even the word sales, it's gotten a bad rap. And for women, we, we think that we're not good at that or... Um, we don't know how to do it because of all the reasons, all the things that we've heard. We don't want to be pushy. We don't want to be aggressive. We don't want to be salesy. That's a whole new word. That what does that mean? Salesy, you know? Right. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. That that yeah. in itself is describing that energy that you're talking about that people don't want to feel. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So absolutely a good point. So you know we're helping people. You know on this show, right? We're talking about how we help people to be more strategic so they can take back time they can do things more efficiently and effectively now you know let's put that into what what that means in terms of the sales process so what kind of result will someone get when they can shift the energy that they're bringing to a conversation they can double and triple their sales they can Period. double and triple their sales and could they do it faster or does it take just as long they can do it if you are coming from the right energy, your own energy, this energy of gratitude, and you add to that your energy of, I want to be of service to this person in front of me. I want to find out what do they dream about, and I want to help them get either reach their dream or get this much closer to their dream. That's that value that you talked about. When you can help somebody get what it is that they dream about you're putting your own agenda aside you've lot you've left your agenda you you're there to serve them they are going to come closer to you if not physically you know and that shortens up the whole time frame of how you create trust and yeah. you know likability and the whole you know no like and trust factor, right? Totally. It's a, it's a speed, speed to trust, but it's, it's going to shorten the sales cycle. If we can optimize and improve our conversations, we don't have to have as many of them. So exactly. that in itself, right, is an efficient and effective process. And it really does. I totally believe it. It comes with the energy that you show up. And it's not just when you're selling something. You know, uh, I was on stage three times last week. And one of those three times, I felt like something was off and I couldn't, I couldn't put my finger on it. And I, I record a lot of my sessions and I listened back through the session and I watched and I said, you know what? It was my energy. My energy was not as powerful, as animated as it normally is. Something was, was a little flatter and, ah. and I could feel it in the audience. So either I was affected by the energy that was around me or I affected the energy that was around me, right? Because it's a it's symbiotic uh, re relationship. 
It is. It's a give and take. And so it can go both ways. And so it's anywhere and it's, in our life. I just want to point that out for everybody who's listening. It's everywhere in our life. It's not only if you're selling, it's if you're having uh, a, a meeting and you're, you know, just in a regular meeting at work or it's happening in your relationships with your kids or with your spouse. Energy is everything, right? How many people, you know, there's this whole thing where you get in a fight when you walk in the door because everybody's energy is in different places. And so you're responsible for your energy. And it's funny because you say not just selling. It could be, you know, talking to your kids or talking to your spouse or at work in a meeting. You know, in fact, all of those places you're selling. Oh, that's because true. If you're sharing an idea, not selling somebody on some idea. If you're working with your kids and you're communicating and you're trying to influence them in a certain way to be a certain person and to, you know, take care of their room or whatever it might be, you're selling them on another idea. Yeah. So whether it's leadership or, you know, a meeting or at home, you are constantly selling in your life every moment, whether you're selling yourself on an idea, whether I have to sell myself to get my little fanny to the gym, right? Absolutely. We, have, we are. We're selling to ourselves and we're selling to others all the time. So we might as well embrace it, right? Embrace yeah. it and, and, and know what drives a, a successful outcome. Exactly. And one of the things that you said about speeding up time, being efficient, not only do you pay attention to your energy and if you need to shift it, but when you have clarity, when you are very clear on where you're going. If you see the end result of what it is that you want to happen, whether it's an interaction with your partner, the interaction with your kids, a meeting at work like you talked about, or an interaction with someone who you want to provide your services or products to. When you have a very clear goal in mind, very clarity, clarity of intention is how I would say it. Absolutely. You know what yeah, you, want, you know what the best outcome could ever be, and, and you state that or you think about that, that also speeds up the time frame. Absolutely. And that, that clarity, as you're saying, that's also directing your energy, right? Is directing your, your energy. You're, you're directing it. So, because I talk about that in terms of, uh, you know, your time management. So before you sit down for any task, whether it's a conversation uh, that you're having around uh, sales product or service, uh, or it's just getting something done, is to set an intention for that time frame of, okay, what can I accomplish in this 30 minutes or this, this hour's time frame, and be clear on your intention of, of where you're going to focus, right? So it's, it's the same kind of thing. It's just giving you that, that focus so that your energy stays aligned to what, what it is that you want. And then you can get there faster. I see it like a laser. If, if our energy and our ideas are all over the place, but if you focus it, like you're saying, and you direct it right to where you're going and where you, what you result you want to have, your laser like with your clarity and your intention, you are going to, you're going to get things done in a very short period of time. You read my bio. I, I was over 1000% of quota for 13 years. All of my cohorts worked eight, 10, 12 hours a day. I worked about four or five. That's great. And so, and that's because of, of these, uh, these techniques, right? Yes. Yes. And that's where, that's what I call the magic. That's, that's the, the magic. magic. That's the magic. Yeah. It's being able to do it in four hours instead of eight. That's the magic. That's awesome. Well, I understand that you also have, uh, a, a program around, you know, teaching people like, do you have something like that where people can find out more information about uh, how they can get in touch with you? Yes, we have a, a sales magic a couple series of different classes. And the best way to get a hold of me is to go in and um, apply for a strategy session where I can help you see where do you need help around sales. And the easiest way to do that is to go to sales magic makeover.com very short little application and i'll answer you and, and we can have a great chat perfect well that's great before i let you go i want to i want to know let's tell tell the listeners something 
personal about you that, you know, that they can connect to why this is important to you? I have a passion for helping women. That's one of the things that I have a passion for. When I was in sales, I was a single mom. And when I was over 1,000% of quota, that allowed me to buy a house, to take my child on trips. It allowed me to spend, you know, get up and leave the office and if my kid fell down and skinned his knee. So it's the freedom, and it's not necessarily just for women, but it's the freedom that it gives you when you can help other people get what they want and what they need and what they dream about. It not only fills you up, but it gives you this freedom to explore more opportunities in your life. And that's something that I'm really passionate about. Awesome. And what's one of the biggest challenges that you've had that you've overcome? I actually had um, my financial advisor steal my life savings. And that was a big one. That's a big one. And so was that also a driver in this where you said, that's the, you know, that was the turning point. Yes. We can always, I got to work and do this in four hours so that I can get my money back. Not only that, a lot of times we have our self-worth mm. wrapped up in our net worth. Yes. And that doesn't do you any good. We are all amazing beings and however much money you have or you make or whatever your product or you're selling, none of that makes any difference towards who you are. We are magnificent beings. We're all geniuses in our own right. And I love to help people find their genius and, and go towards their dream and make them their lives more fulfilling. So was I that, love- was that one of your challenges? Cause you know, I had that same challenge where I had early success in my career, like, you know, big time major. And then I switched careers and sort of started at ground zero again. And it was very humbling. Like I did have that, that, uh, whatever you want to call it, that complex of of feeling like, okay, now I'm not making the money. And so I'm not, you know, I'm not worthy or, or having that lack of confidence because of that. And I know that was a, something that I had to overcome. Is, so is that what happened in that process is, is that you? Exactly. I got the rug ripped out from underneath me and I toppled for a couple of years and I got to know who I am and what I love and what I'm passionate about. And I'm passionate about people. I love being in relationship with people and helping them achieve their dreams. And it took me a little bit to figure that out. And, you know, that was definitely the catalyst. (laughs) Well, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. This was fun. And for all of you listening, thank you for being here. Yes, we all have challenges, challenges in our beliefs that tell us we're not enough, that create fear, that make us want to reach that goal in desperation. And the truth is you're worth it. And all you need to do is bring that energy from within. You know, you said love people. So just, just love, love on the people that you're, that you're selling, care about them, want them to have more and, uh, and, and just be bringing the energy, the intention, the clarity that is going to help you be more successful to shorten that sales cycle and double your sales at the same time. That's how you take back time. Thank you all, and we'll see you in the next episode. My name is Penny Zanker, and this is Take Back Time.